a certain process of elimination. There's gonna be a lot of people that send in songs to your favorite artists. They're gonna listen through it. They're gonna tell you what they love about it. Sometimes they won't. Tell you what they love about it. If you're starting at the bottom, you might not hear anything and you just might find out you got a song on the album. But if you're, if you're somewhere in the mid range that they tell you, you got a publisher, you got a lawyer, you got a manager, you'll get some information back. They'll shift through the song, see if it matches for their album. They'll take it, they'll sing it. You'll wait for the album to come out. Then you'll realize you got it. Then after the album come out, <laughs> they need to, or they make your song a single, you still got a year to even see the revenue from it. So it's a long ass process of being a songwriter. And I really feel like songwriters should start getting paid up front like a producer does, because it really is a long process. And you know, normally you get your money from a loan, just like you get a college loan. Writers, songwriters get a loan as well. We get a songwriter loan. And that loan is to keep you um, good until you get a hit. Just as much as the college loan is good till you graduate. So, yes. When it comes down to listening to the radio, you can listen to the radio for inspiration, but what you're listening to is probably a year to two to three years older. So these are people who are not listening to the radio at the time you're listening to the radio. If you want this song to come on the radio tomorrow and somebody is telling you they need a hit right now, then yeah, you can get inspiration from the radio, maybe in the tempo. I would say if you're gonna to listen to if you're gonna mimic the radio, just listen, to, just mimic the tempo. Like, and if you, and I would say mix. So if trap is on the radio, maybe try to do trap pop. Try to put them together, like trap country, which is Lil Nas X. So I think anything that you do, go see what's hot on every radio and then like put it together. That might get you um, heard a little faster. So what you want to do is write what you would like to be on the radio. So, Rude Boy, What's My Name, Where Have You Been, those songs were nowhere near the radio, but, you know, Rihanna is an artist who likes to hear forward-thinking music. You know, how would it sound? And you should be writing for what it's going to sound like at least in 2023, more than what would be going on in 2021, because you're listening to, like, 2019 music. When it comes down to rejection in the music industry, I think you have to take out the word rejection because you shoot me a shot. When you're shooting, when you're pitching, you're pitching constantly. So when, <laughs> when I see people kind of like too much in celebration mode because they got one song, I'm like, eesh. You know, that pitch don't last long. You know, so you should be, like Jimmy Iovine said, it, it one out of 25 songs will be good. So that means the, I would say somebody should write about, oh shit, like 300 songs a year. I don't, 300 songs a year sounds right to me. And I know that somebody is like, 300 songs? <laughs> yes, I'm gonna give you the math of how I work. And I don't fucking get nobody no math, right? But I'm gonna tell you the math, right? Three songs a night or five. Three songs or five, right? Try to write, it's a different type of track so you don't feel stuck. So if you take five different kind of tracks, now you got five, 10, 15, 20. So either in four days of the week, you're gonna have 20 songs. Four times, you know, then you got, what, what is that? Four times 20 is 80. Boom, let's go for five days a week. So if you do one month and you do at least five ideas a night because you got a 12 hour session, you should be able to just, I mean, this is the people who really want to make it. I'm not talking about people who like think they want to be a songwriter. I'm, talk, I'm giving you a math of the professionals. The professionals work. Like, I've never known anybody who work harder than the people in the music industry without getting paid first. So that's with no perks until, you know, you perk yourself up. So 100 songs a month 
100 ideas a month, shopping two songs a week, because out of those five songs, it should be two of them that's worth shopping. You're gonna, by the time you finish up the year, which is 12, you'll have 100, what is that, 1,200 songs. It sounds like a lot. It's not. It's not a lot because remember, you need 25 out, one out of every 25 songs might be the one. So get to work, that's all I'm saying. Anyway, but that's how you become a song machine. A song machine is you count up how you, you count up your inventory. If you take warehousing and you take product management and put it into song form and music form, you will find out how to make a, like a conveyor belt of music and then have about five people that you send it out to, like five trusted people that you like, this A&R listens to my songs because I'm getting to record it with him. This manager listens to my songs because I have recorded with him. This label likes my songs because I have sold multiple times to them. This artist likes my songs because she has taken many of my songs. This uh, producer fucks with me because he I have written to many of his songs. Know your clients and make sure you're servicing your clients. So everything about the music industry is just being a business person. Know your clients, cater to the clients who are coming back to you full, like full time, and you'll have songs on the radio easy. And even if it's not on the radio, it might be on a movie, it might be on a TV show, it might be on something that no, not like all your friends don't know. I have so many things that nobody knows that I'm doing because it's not in their, their vision, you know, they don't have to know that I'm on an animation. That's fine. That's not your fans have different fans in different areas. So you must, must, must put more inventory into your catalog. And then you can start, you can always sell those songs years and years. I done sold songs that was five years old. Come and get it for Selena Gomez was five years old when I sold, when I placed it. Five years old. Okay, so inspiration for songwriting, cause I'll be like, yeah, 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 ba ba ba, hit that ass, hit that ass, do the edit, boo the edit, edit. That don't take no inspiration. That don't take no inspiration. I'm not, like, I get, I live a very fruitful life, meaning I love to pick from the garden of my life, and 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 my inspiration is from wherever I'm being that day. Like I'm, insp I'm inspired by this outfit. You know, this to me, California love. This is what this look like. This looks like 1990s Ice Cube. This is like, and then I could go home and I could find a West Coast beat and I could play that. You know, this diner reminds me of Greece. So if I want to go home and make a song about Greece or how that aesthetics was or how that sounded, that's where I'm gonna get my inspiration. And it's a book called um, The Artist's Way. And she talks about going out and finding inspiration in your life every day to be able to bring it back. I don't believe it has to be perfect, but it does have to be powerful. It has to sell. It has to be able to be caught uh, immediately, really. Because they're listening to, you're listening to your song back to back because it's your song. They're listening to a um, uh, amount of people's songs and they're only going to keep what they heard that was good. You know what I'm saying? So if they, if they listen, you're, it has to be really good. It has, you have to sound like an artist for your songs to sell. Is the music industry as glamorous as it seems? Fuck yeah. Hell yeah motherfucking damn right and I ain't leaving this bitch. I don't know any other job that carries the fun load like the music industry and I'm pretty sure acting the TV does because I done, I done been to some of those parties and they was pretty nice, I ain't gonna say that. But when I tell you the music industry, everybody, fun is the lifestyle. Fun is how, fun is the job. The, but the thing is, they, people who come in confuses it. They think fun as in, shit, what do they be doing? Cause I call them slackers. It's so funny how I can see 
a person that's, that thinks they're in the industry and they're not. Cause they look like slackers to me. I'm like, you going out? You going to the club? You had dinner? You supposed to be in the studio. The, first of all, the fun is in the studio. And then eating is afterwards. In the, I don't know, cause everything about the music industry is super fun, but it's fun in between the work. It's fun hanging out with people in the studio, but you're not just hanging out, you're really working. I, I, I really, really do think it's a misconception of uh, studio etiquette and, and music industry etiquette. And I mean, you really gotta be in it to understand how you are supposed to have fun creating, but anybody who comes in just to have fun and not work, those people, they get, they get booted out real fast. Because if you can't generate money, that's like a, it's exactly what it is. Cause I look at this guy, Brian Tracy. So he talks about when you're at work, work. So there's people who come in to the music industry. He calls them water cooler workers. The people who go to the water cooler, wait for somebody to come around, talk all day, and then all of a sudden they've been there for eight hours, 12 hours, and they think it's time to go. And they think they did something because they came to work. Music industry, inside the work, is very fun, but you must work inside the fun environment. So if a person don't know how to work inside of chaos, work inside of excitement, work inside of like people looking like they drinking and having a good time, you still ain't gonna see me drinking because I'm not there for the entertainment, I'm there for the work. So I'll be like, I used to be in studios and <laughs> I'll be in the booth, right? And there's a huge window, this bay window, and it's like weed and drinks and girls and boys and they chilling and everybody got diamonds all over their hands and everybody is like living a good life and I can't hear them at all. In my room, it is quiet because I'm in the booth. So in the booth, you it's like soundproof. You can't hear them, they can't hear you. And then outside in that room, which I, uh, I feel sorry for engineers because they have to hear it. So the engineer is recording us while there's a big party outside. And as there's music being played out on the outside, it's quiet in my room and I'm just getting, I'm just getting the work done. So it's such a, you know, uh, polar difference about how work really works in the studio. So to feel like a celebrity and then the next minute feel like nobody, I never feel like a nobody and I never feel like a celebrity. So I just don't play in that, I don't play in that area. I, I, sometimes I try to, act, to, to see what celebrityism is, but I, I never got into the, do you know who I am or do you know what I've done? Uh, I think the celebrity comes with an ego that I just don't want to be a part of. So, and then I never want to feel like a nobody because I'm not a celebrity. Like I believe that everybody is like the best motherfuckers out here in this world. So I hate when people put down people because they're not at a level that society tells them to be at. It's a bullshit. The songwriting avenues I mean, it comes from, you can do commercials, you can do Disney, you can do TV shows. And I say you can do Disney because Disney is a whole separate thing. You have to, if you're doing Disney, you just, you're just doing that Disney thing, uh, that project. But it's so many avenues, but I, I only picked the one that I wanted and that was the radio. That's the one that pays a lot. I want my money. Tip number one, two, three, and four. Two things that's gonna get you the amount of money that you want. That it's always, if you want a million dollars, trust me, there's a million dollar job out there. Just get qualified for it. How do I recharge? I'm an Aries, so I find different ways to do it. Right now, the way I'm recharging is vlogging. I just decided to cut off my music line 
because I do have a project that I'm going to do that is going to need my full attention. So I'm saving myself for the marriage of that contract, right? So I think I saved myself. I saved myself for like, if I want to take photos, if it's not the right time, I'm not taking photos, but I'll save my looks in my phone. If I want to do an album, I'll save my album in my phone. So I'm, they call it a micro procrastinator. So I do little bitty things that go toward my next adventure. So that's how I recharge, it's just by switching over to something else. One tip is don't waste your momentum. When people are fond of you, that means they have taken their attention to you. Do not waste the eyes of appreciation because once they look at you, they're looking at you so hard that even when you think that they're not looking, they are. So if you, are you the hot shit on the block and you think that you, you know, you kind of like, I don't know what it is that people do. It's like they be the hot shit in the street and then they think that that's the time to go and be the hot shit in the street. That's what it is. They take their, their success out of the music industry and into the streets. When you really need to be pitching, 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 like, hey, I just wrote that last hit. I'm hitting every meeting. I'm hitting every studio. I'm hitting every producer, every artist, every everybody, because my momentum is high. Some people take their momentum and go kick it with their cousins because the music industry told them they was hot. So then they take their business and start pitching themselves to people that can't bring the next, you know, job. It's like flossing at the time that you should be pitching and working. Hey, this is Esther Dean. Thank you for watching my channel. Make sure you like, subscribe, and come and follow me on Instagram. I hope these tips or this rant work for you. And I'll see you next time. Tip me. Every nigga,